Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. What if you had known somebody for only nine months and you found out they needed a kidney transplant? Well, that was just the situation facing Dr. Vanessa Grubbs, and she wrote about her inspiring journey in her book, Hundreds of Interlaced Fingers. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thank you. All right, so you were dating this man for nine months. He was on dialysis already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then... Well, he had been on dialysis for about five years when we met, and I knew that, and I was a primary care doctor at the time. And um, if what was interesting to me is that even though I was already a doctor, I really had no idea what went on within the kidney transplant system. So uh, through him, I got a bit closer to that, and I got a bit closer than I could with my, all my training to what people on dialysis actually go through. Mm -hmm. And so it was the combination of both of those things feeling like the system was um, kind of hard to negotiate through that really made me think, I, I should see if I can give him one of mine. Yeah. Yeah. And people all around you, your friends, everyone thought, you've only known this man nine months. Well, some people responded very positively, and some people were like, girl, you don't even have a ring yet, because <laughs> we, we weren't engaged, but we did get married a few months mm -hmm. after the surgery. Yeah, you're married to him. So. Yeah, almost um, 12 years. So your decision-making process, I mean, after going through all of that, would you do it again? I would. I would. Um, you know, it's rare that some people are born with three kidneys. Most of us just have two. But I think if I was one of those rare people with three kidneys, I, I'd, I'd donate again. Do you think it helped you being a patient, you being a doctor, do you mm -hmm. think it helped you to be a patient? Because you had to be on the other end, too. You know, if anything, I think it certainly enriched how I see medical practice and how I engage with patients because I, I think, in general, doctors tend to be a healthy bunch. So we haven't really personally been through anything and we don't know what that other side is like so I think it certainly gives me a, a level of empathy that I might not otherwise have mm -hmm. had I not gone through this whole thing myself yeah so you gave your husband a kidney so let me just ask you when you guys are having a fight do you ever bring that up and say hey, listen <laughs> Listen, buddy. <laughs> Probably not. No, some, someone did say that it was better than uh, having a prenup. But, yeah, it's no. very true. <laughs> what made you first want to go into medicine? Mm, you know, it's very interesting. I'm from a very small town in North Carolina called Spring Lake, and I hadn't really thought about it. I was, you know, I was... A uh, pretty much a nerd all my life, so I was interested in math and science. Um, but most people from that area uh, went into the military, they became teachers, they worked at the local factory, so no one really um, had that kind of aspiration. And so I was thinking of going into medical technology. I didn't really know what it was, <laughs> but it sounded good and it was different from everybody else. And then one day, my, um, my oldest brother, um, I'm the surprise baby of the family. He's 16 years my senior. Wow. When I was a junior in high school, he asked me, what do you want to do? And I said, well, I'm going to do medical technology. And, and he said, you should, you should go all the way because you can and become a doctor. And that was the first time that idea was put into my head, and I said, okay, that's what I'll do. Yeah, and you went to Duke for undergrad and for medical school, mm -hmm. and you were only one of two women of color in your class? Um, yes. Um, at Duke, we have um, small classes, and I think um, altogether there were um, eight to ten um, black and Latino students and just a couple of women. And what was, was that experience like? You know, it's tough. I think um, probably some of the reason I was late to come to the decision that I wanted to be a doctor in the first place is because I didn't see anybody that looked like me in the profession. And I think it's, um, it's difficult when you don't see examples of yourself. You, you often don't feel like you belong. And then, unfortunately, I think some people also make you you know, they say things to suggest that you don't belong. Sure. But at the end of the day, we all take the same test to get to where we need to be. And you are where you are. I am. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. What advice do you have for all of us? You, you said that, you know, a lot of people in the medical profession are pretty healthy. What advice for us to stay healthy, mm -hmm. even if we don't have kidney disease and struggling with that? Well, you know, I think one thing that also happened from my relationship with my husband is that, you know, for him, I gave him a kidney to help him. But for everyone else, I, I wanted to do research into um, how 
people can access kidney transplant, there tends to be racial disparities. Not everybody has the same access. And so that is what inspired me to go into nephrology and actually become a kidney doctor. So, and, and this too has been very much of an eye opener for me. And I think uh, in terms of what I see with chronic kidney disease, like a lot of other conditions, people don't have any symptoms. So it's um, sad in that we see people really late because you don't get symptoms until really late. So what I would encourage people to do is get that annual checkup and just to detect things sooner than you would otherwise. Yeah, that is good advice. What about the title, Hundreds of Interlaced Fingers? Yeah. Um, I didn't pick that title, <laughs> but it is based upon uh, uh, my description of the kidney on an electron microscopic level. Oh. And um, so the book is, I tried very hard to make sure it's not a textbook, but also give a lot of information, um, understanding that, you know, the, the general audience doesn't have a lot of understanding about kidneys. So. Um, that was me describing it on that level. And to me, it was the most beautiful thing. And, you know, I went into nephrology not really being that motivated by nephrology. It was for me, it was the research. But once I got in and I saw just the kidney for um, who she was and what she's capable of, I personify her as she in the book. Um, I was just really in inspired and you know, fell in love with um, the whole field. Well, your story is very inspiring. Thank so thank you. you so much for coming on the show and telling thank us you. all about it. And to hear more about Vanessa's journey and to get a copy of her book, just log on to nephrologist.com. Joining us next, a guest who got in the best shape of her life without giving up pizza and ice cream. How'd she do that? We'll find out.